Rashid Ali. My name is Tubdin Kunjan. Yeah, so my the name was given by our great master Kapje Lama Zohar And I have joined the Koban Monastery in 1987. Uh, so, and since after the few years later, uh, I became the attendant of the our beloved abbot uh, Kapje Ken Zohar Mbache Geshe Lama uh, from uh, 1992 so <clears throat> so today I would like to tell uh, the short uh, biography of King Surimbashi uh, Lamandu uh, so and his the deeds and his extraordinary activities that he have done in his life and his practice and his achievement so I would like to share this to all of you uh, so, and Will of Abbot Kenzur Mbashi Lamundu was born in uh, Tibet, uh, where there's a very small village uh, uh, near to uh, Lhasa. And when he was uh, six years old, uh, his mother went to uh, uh, the small, uh, what called the monastery. Uh, so she was renounced to uh, uh, and then she went to, uh, to practice and meditate. And then when uh, Shenzhou Rinpoche was eight years old, uh, he went to join with his uncle. The uncle name is called uh, Uncle Chung Nyema. And he was stay with him. And then he started learning the, the basic uh, studies of like uh, alphabet and then the, the reading practices. And the age of uh, 13, uh, then Kenzo Rinpoche went to join the Seraje Monastery in Tibet uh, and, and he was uh, ordained at the Seraje Monastery in Tibet and then he uh, continued his study there and uh, until uh, 1959, when the 1959 uh, the China was invaded the Tibet and then from there on, uh, the His Holiness Dalai Lama, and then there are many other like uh, spiritual masters and sanghas who was who escaped from Tibet to India, and the Kensu Rinpoche was one of the, uh, them to follow down to India, and then all of them they got uh, the India government has given place in the called the I think northern India near to Assam. So, <clears throat> so they got a, uh, they all got a place to stay there, and then they continue studying from the different teachers and learn the philosophy at that time. And so, when they were at uh, Baksu, so Kenzo Rinpoche met uh, Lama Ishi and Lama Soba, and then some other teachers. And uh, so, so they were also continue to study the philosophy classes in the Baksu. But even they just arrived from Tibet, but they have like uh, the living condition was very poor, and also they didn't have a uh, good food to eat. But even uh, that, but their concentration was hundred percent and on the philosophy studies, and many of them they also escaped from Tibet and they were not able to bring their the philosophy taxes with them, but they got only few taxes, and. So these taxes they have to share, each of them have to share around to uh, learn the philosophy and turn by turn. And when they are uh, learning the philosophy, so uh, when they get turned to re uh, receive these taxes to study, uh, the philosophy taxes, so because the next day they have to return to the other person. So even they use the, 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 the what called the, uh, the incense, the light flame to use on the, the taxes to memorize and to learn. So they have such a hard uh, time in the Baksu. So later part, after a few years, the India government give, has given to another place, the place called the, near to Mysore. Uh, the presently we call it uh, Seraje, South India. And the government has given these places. And then many of them, they uh, moved down to the Belogobi, the, this, uh, the Seraje, uh, the new places. And they settled down in that places. And then day and night, uh, because the places was uh, like all bush, 
bushes and then they cut down the, all the bushes and then like even uh, then they start building the new like, uh, rooms and gombas and even when they are cutting down the bushes uh, the what you call the uh, because the, sometimes the, at the full moon they have a uh, moonlight at night they even walk at the night uh, the whole night to cut down the bushes and in then later the Lama Soba and Lama Ishi was founded the Koban Monastery and then Lama Ishi sent the later to South India the Sereche uh, to Kinsurambaji uh, Lama Nundu uh, asked him to come to Kopan to teach the uh, the young monks and uh, so then he went the Kinsurambaji went to the Sereche airport to get the permission but the Sereje airport was giving him permission to stay or live to Kopan only three months. So once he came uh, to Kopan, then Lama Ishi asked him to uh, stay here and remain the, uh, here to teach the, all the young monks. So at that time, we have uh, Kopan has around 40 to 50 Sankhas. And then he was continuing teaching uh, uh, all the philosophies to the young monks and taking care of the young monks. So during that time, some of the young monks are very small. Uh, even night time, like they are, some of them, they do like the uh, pee on the bed. So here, even at night, like middle of the night, he go to the young monks' room uh, to wake them up, bring to the toilet. So he was such a like a uh, taking care of like mothers, all the young monks. And later in 19, uh, I think 84, Lama Ji passed away, and then uh, Kensu Rumbaji was uh, role to take care of everything, and so <clears throat> because and he and then they, because at that time Lama Ji was passed away, and Lama Saba has to travel around to the different country to, because we have different uh, centers around the world, and so Rumbaji has to go down to the teach, and then Kensu Rumbaji has uh, taken all the responsibility like. Uh, taking care, uh, teaching, chanting master, managing, and at that time he was not officially uh, appointed as abbot, but he was doing everything, uh, and he really take care of, like on his child in day and night. And also the I mean after the Lama she passed away, Kinsir was rolled uh, to do everything, and plus the uh, his. Uh, the strong wishes to what the Lama Eishi and Lama Sovereign, which is the fulfill their own, all of their wishes. And he always tried to do that. And because his devotion, faith to the two, to the Kyabja Lama Sovereign, which and Lama Eishi was so strong. And he always tried their uh, wishes to fulfill. And during that time, also not only Kyabja Lama Sovereign, and also the, the supporter roles of the uh, taking care of Kopan, uh, uh, of course, the Gisha Lama Konchok. And then the, the all the student of Lama Ishi and Lama Soba. And yeah, so they all uh, supported role to taking care of Kopan in all the different uh, parts. And of course, the Kinsu Rinpoche was an uh, uh, unrepairable kindness that uh, he has done for Kopan Monastery and all the Sanghas. And, he, and then from there on, he has founded the, uh, I mean, of course, he has sent like so many Sankhas from Kopan to South India, Sereja Monastery to study. And also, uh, uh, he has some, sent some monks to uh, Yumi Tandri College to study. And right now, I mean, in later part, Kinsurimbaj also, he all, also started uh, the Yumi Tandri College at the Kopan Monastery. And so, and we also have the, even, even though we already have the, the full studies of the philosophy in Kopan Monastery, but he want the uh, Sanghas go to Sarah Monastery in uh, Jimmy Thandu College. They can come with the special qualities and learn it. So in future, they can uh, continue Kopan to teach to the other Sanghas and can uh, benefit more uh, sentient beings. So this is uh, one of his wish and also his, uh, the Guru's wishes. So he fulfilled the Guru's wishes. And even we have the philosophy here in everyday debate classes. So Kenji Rinpoche never miss uh, debate classes. Every day he go to debate classes at night until 10 o'clock. And then later the monks do the memorizing classes. He always uh, watch out uh, all the monks are doing memorizing, uh, recall the memorizing classes, proper or not. Then only 11 
30, he goes back to his room. Then he continues his own studies, uh, I mean, mem the meditations and his commitments. He do until like morning, two, three o'clock. Then he always go to the bed. So after he then go to bed, then in the morning he always, when he wake up, he always do the, uh, before the bed tea, he always do the meditations. And then after the bed tea, he do the whatever offerings. And he, every time, every day he do the uh, 35 Buddha's uh, prayers and frustrations before uh, he go uh, to the work. And then uh, he always the, uh, generate for the motivations. Then he always start looking around. And he is like, uh, really like our mother taking care of the child. He's not only like taking care of the child, you know, he only like, he's a very extraordinary, uh, taking care of every, each single, the difficulties of the sanghas and nuns. And he has given the equally education to the monks and nuns. And right now we have uh, so many uh, monks who have studied in the Saraje Monastery, who have uh, uh, graduated. And at the present airport, uh, Kenrinpoche Kishishinyi, uh, who is the first Sangha Kenshiro Rinpoche sent to South India uh, to become a Geshe. So presently he's uh, enrolled in the airport uh, Kenrinpoche in Kapan Monastery. And then, uh, then there are some uh, monks who already been studying in the Gyume Tandri College. And many of them, they are already qualified right now here and they are teaching in our Tandri College. Uh, to the, our general uh, monks and also he has a uh, I mean equally educated uh, given education to the the nuns so we have now two nuns have qualified it uh, uh, as a Gishima uh, degree so not only qualified Gishima degree uh, one of the them also the within the different nunneries in the competition in the uh, India the Gishima uh, uh, studies one of the nun was the, even within them, she is the first uh, uh, one. And now many of the, the uh, monks and nuns are, now we have over total uh, about 400 uh, monks in Kobani Monastery and uh, 370 nuns and nunnery. So they all have equally giving, uh, getting uh, uh, educations. And also he, Every time he always, uh, even he was uh, has a uh, many, because since 1996, uh, uh, Kenshi Rinpoche uh, uh, started traveling to like uh, different countries like Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, Taiwan. And so every year, like one month, even that purpose is traveling there is like he has a, uh, because uh, during that time, a little bit of uh, financially difficulties because we have uh, so many Sanghas and has to build up the new accommodations, the kitchens. So he started traveling from the, uh, that time. And he also teaches to the uh, Lamrim and the different teachings in the different centers. So he doesn't want to spend more than one month there because even the people uh, over there to request remain more than a month. But he always said that if I stay here uh, longer, who will take care of my child? So he always concerned about even his physically in out of the country, but he mentally he is always in the Kopan Monastery, uh, think of the, his own students and uh, the monks. And even he's in Singapore, Malaysia, he always keep call to the, the Kopan, like every three days, two days, and checking is everything going on well or everything's fine, uh, how are everything, uh, the monks and nuns, uh, how are their studies, he always concerned about this. So, uh, so this is really uh, great. Uh, uh, kind of taking care of the Kaban Monastery and nuns. And then, uh, so he has been a part of this monastery over four decades. So officially, Kensu Rinpoche, even though his role was 100% uh, uh, in everything, but officially he got uh, this, the, the abbot, uh, the official role Ken Rinpoche was in, given by his own Dalai Lama in uh, 2002. So, and even the, not only the, our, the monastery nuns, so he has also uh, started the, the Molam prayer festivals. Right now, every year we are doing it uh, after the Tibetan New Year. So he has, uh, at the first, he was invited all the different monasteries in the Kamandu Gelebo monasteries uh, to bring it together. And he was lead uh, all the monasteries together and then uh, lead the, the uh, Molam prayer festival. So we are 
this year was like uh, I think 29th or 30th um, prayer festivals. So this is also one of the uh, Lamashi's wishes because uh, even though Kinsu Rinpoche, before he part, uh, uh, part, uh, showing the uh, Nirvana, so Kinsu Rinpoche has mentioned that you know, this is one of the Lamashi's wishes also. And he also advised to uh, every one of us have to continue with this, uh, the prayer festivals. And also, not only that, uh, no, we have this, uh, all the uh, ten monasteries and nuns, nunneries, they have uh, uh, this uh, Geluk uh, Education Committee, and they do the exam and uh, the, the debate competition within the monasteries every year. So all this, he was the, the advisor and leading uh, to those uh, different com uh, communities. And he was also very well known in Tibetan community in uh, Kathmandu. Because every time he always advised the different societies, different monasteries, uh, different uh, uh, Buddhist communities, he always gives the advice and teachings. So he's also a very well-known uh, master in Nepal. 2000, uh, end of the 2010, he has manifest uh, sickness and we advise him to go to Singapore check up. But during that time, his uh, teacher, Kyavja Lama uh, was here. So he was uh, refused refused to go to the for checkup. So at the end, Jebja Lama Rinpoche advised him to go there for checkup. Then he accepted uh, go to the checkup. But then at that time, uh, he is already like a uh, uh, very serious sickness. And then uh, the doctor advised uh, him to do the uh, chemo or uh, don't do chemo. So even that time also, he was, uh, uh, so serious sick, but he doesn't care. So he completely he uh, check with the Kyavja Lama, so he is the Dal Lama. Whatever they advise, he will uh, follow. So when the the Dal his the Dal Lama check, and then uh, so uh, best not to do the the chemo, and then he came back. He was uh, staying in the Kapan Monastery. Uh, so he passed away in 2011. So even before he uh, passed away. Uh, he was uh, all the time he was doing prayers and he was in the meditation positions and uh, he was doing meditations and even the last moment he know he's going to pass away any moment and he requests Kyavja Lama Subramache prayer for and whatever if he has done anything wrong he asks for forgiveness and also the uh, so he has mentioned that you know from his uh, to Rinpoche uh, Guru uh, that if I have reborn in lower rim, may I become the source of uh, uh, bring the lower rim sentient beings to the uh, higher reborn. So that kind of thought, and we can see that how kind he is and how great master he is, and and even uh, he before he passed away, like two weeks before. He was checked and he requests uh, uh, to do the prayers in the, this uh, different monastery like Yume uh, Monastery and Seraje and Sereme, all the different monasteries. Uh, so the, he chose the exact day uh, to do the prayers. But then the, the day he chose two weeks ago and he passed away the same day. So there was really uh, uh, amazing and how he, he has chosen the uh, what day he's going to pass away and how he know all this the great only the these great masters realized beings only can uh, know so if ordinary beings they cannot see when they are going to pass away and even he passed away in 2011 September after he passed away uh, he was a uh, meditation uh, position inside uh, what called inside meditation so three days and after that we had uh, the cremation in this uh, at this place here and after cremation he has manifest so many relics so even so if the masters show the relics means that there is no doubt that this master is a great realized beings so only the great masters are realization beings uh, uh, they can produce the relics, they can show up the relics because the relics they show up is the purpose is to even though they pass away they're leaving behind relics to benefit all sentient beings uh, giving the blessings and so we have a relic shan room above the tantric monasteries so whoever come to Kopan uh, 
Sri Kopan, visit the Kopans, all the visitors. We always uh, give opportunity to see the relics. And so by seeing these uh, relics, uh, the relics of uh, Kensuru Mbache Lama and the Kishi Lama Konjo, and it will inspire everyone who have visited and they will receive the blessings. And in 2007, so the end of the 16th, and so, I mean, of course, uh, after the, he passed away, and like Kapsi Lama Sopo has uh, 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 composed his quick return reincarnation prayers, and until we uh, hear the, the reincarnation, his reincarnation, we have been doing the prayers in every day. And then also at the same time, Kapsi Lama Sopo advised to build the stupa, uh, in order to return his quick return of reincarnation. And we have built one in uh, here, and he advised two stupas to build, and one uh, here at the Kobana Monastery and one in Nanari. And also, the uh, so he advised to build one of the statues uh, of the Kensu Rinpoche, so we have built a statue. And so in 2000, 16, end of 2016, we have a very uh, grateful, happy news from Jabji Lama Sarumaji that uh, our Kinsu Rinpoche Lama reincarnation has found. So everyone, one of the Goban Sanghas uh, has very joyfully and able to receive. And then 2017 March, we have the enthronement of the Kinsu uh reincarnation. Uh, so at that time he was, uh, I think, four years old and he's, he's uh, his name is given by Kapsi Lama Sobha Rinpoche Tupten Riksal. And then we had an intro man. And then also his only was given him the new name, uh, Tenzin Lodu. And we also have an audience with his Holiness Dalai Lama. Uh, right now, the Kapsi Rinpoche's reincarnation, uh, Lama Tupten Riksal Rinpoche, he is seven years old. And he's uh, at Kopan Monastery and he is studying at Koban Monastery School and every day he go to school and he's very wise and he really in, uh, enjoying the studies of the school and all the studies at the Koban Monastery. <laughs> Okay, now I would uh, like to introduce the, our precious uh, late Kensu Rinpoche Kishu Lundu uh, reincarnation. Yes, Dele everybody. My name is Sultan Rinpoche Rinpoche. I live in Kopan Monastery and I, I am seven years old. Thank you. So <clears throat> at end, what I would like to say is the, uh, our great beloved Kensu Rinpoche Lama when he was alive, he has dedicated completely his life uh, to fulfill his own guru, which is Kapsi Lama Sabu Rinpoche and Lama Ishis, uh, fulfilled. And he continuously dedicated his life towards to them and he has worked for day and night and not only for that and he has also so many uh, students around the world uh, with a great compassion loving caring and with his great smile he always train all of us uh, to and teach us give us advice so and my wish is all of us uh, Maybe always not to degenerate our devotion toward the Guru. And so this will help us to uh, gain our practice and continuously and achieve our realizations. Whether Guru is alive or not alive, far or near, we always have to remember the kindness of the Guru and not from external, only from the inside from the heart, a depth of the heart. This is very important. If you have a great devotion toward the gurus, uh, uh, in every uh, practice, everything, whatever you do, you'll be successful. Devotion is very important. Thank you.